ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Am I talking to you? Am I talking to me? I got ADHD. It's about anything. It's about everything. It's ADHD. Huge day at ADHD because I got my friend Gary Vaynerchuk in the studio. Dude. Thank Dude. you so much for, for coming on. I you really appreciate it. You better thank Mother Nature. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking before the <laughs> mics cut on, and uh, literally, if it wasn't for a blizzard, we wouldn't be doing this right now. That's right. So I was to be in Chicago today, uh, in LA tomorrow, real quick, before I go to Phoenix, but a lot of snow. So my admins adjusted. They're like, we're sending you to LA first thing in the morning. I'm like, cool. And I remember that you reached out. I was like, I really wanted to support you. I appreciate that. Um, and I was like, it slid into your DM. Got tight and slid into Literally, Tyler's. yeah. No, we literally did everything via via Instagram. Yeah. Which is, you know, it's so incredible in the digital age. But one thing about you, man, is you you don't only talk, you don't only talk it, you walk it. You know what I mean? You 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 give away things for free. You you build genuine connections with people. Uh, and you're a man of your word. And and I think like integrity is something that you don't come across very often out here. You know what's crazy is it's mainly because I'm so flattered. The fact that I know that having me as a guest gives you leverage for the guests you get after this, it makes me feel nice. And like, <laughs> it's like such a crazy feeling. It's like, and and I think that all of us want to put people on, especially if we genuinely have a vibe towards yeah. them. And I think that I loved being the whiz kid in the wine world and the tech world. I loved being that whiz kid as a 12 year old baseball card dealer. But as now, you know, I just turned 43, as now I'm going into that next chapter, I remember being 25, 27, and worrying that like, oh shit, one day I won't be the whiz kid and am I gonna be sad? But I'm super fired up to be Yoda, right? Like, <laughs> the like, OG. Yeah, like, you know, I haven't seen Creed 2 yet, right? But Rocky's in the corner, and I'm sure at some point, Rocky was like, fuck, when I'm not gonna be in the ring, is it gonna be as cool? But now he's getting his mm -hmm. high from training up the next generation, and I think, you know, I'm not 70 yet, but no question because everybody's in it so much younger these days. I probably got to feel OG a little bit earlier yeah. than I anticipated. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, like also I got to tell you, having a good memory helps. Like literally getting a text from my admins and being like, we're sending you to LA, realizing I have nothing booked because my day was planned in Chicago. Plenty of things to do, but being able to be like, oh shit, he might be around and just do like yeah. having a good memory has been a sneaky, like, like I, I never talk about this, but like so much of what I pull off is based on having a great memory. I feel like so much of what I pull off is, ha my look, my memory is shoddy. It's very scattered, but what I'm able to do is pull things out of the corner of my mind at a moment's notice. And I, I attribute that to my ADHD. I really do. It's like being able to juggle 50 things at once. The brain's absurd. Like, I, I can tell you like when you sneezed in third grade, but I might not know your name. You know, like, <laughs> like there's all sorts of shit like that. That makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. I, I attribute, you know, I've never, you know, I'm, I'm 43, thus getting classified and all that stuff. That's just not how we did it in the 80s in grammar school. And everybody's hypered, zeroed in on everything these days. But uh, clearly my brain works different and I'm always, I always l chuckle to myself. I'm like, man, if I was going through the system now, I mean. I, I you mean, got horrible grades growing up too, right? Horrible. Awful. Yeah, I mean, literally my favorite Instagram post is when I put up my report, report card. card. Yeah. People, people shit because they hear me say it. But for some reason, I think everybody hears me say that I was a DNF student and decided because of my success that I was a B and C student. <laughs> I really believe that. Yeah. Like even my mom was like, you weren't that bad. I'm like, no, no, this is why I used to flush this report card directly. My whole game was four times a year. I would steal my report card from my mailbox and flush it down the toilet. I wouldn't even hide it. Mm. I was just like pot committed. Like my mom will not see this. At some point, my sister will have to tell that report cards did come out. And at some point, I'll have to be punished for two to three weeks. Yeah, I started going to school when email was just hitting. So they were sending the, e the, the email, like the report card through the email. So I was screwed. Is that true? Is that? Are the youngsters that, you guys got your report cards emailed? My mom, yeah, no. Okay. Oh, no, not that. Okay, he's like, no, no, miss my boat. Yeah, but literally, if I got a truancy, if I didn't go to school, they would they would email my mom. They could call the house. They could do it. Yeah, all I that. didn't cut school or all that stuff. So, like, that wouldn't have bothered me. The killer for me 
was when I went to, so I got bad grades, but then in high school, progress reports fucked me. Ooh. Cause I was okay with getting punished four times a year, but when that shit became eight, that <laughs> fucked me up. <laughs> I used to be able to like enjoy September and October and get hit hard right before my birthday in November. But when I started getting punished like in early, mid October because everything was in danger of failing, that was one of the categories. I'll never forget that. If I started a band, I would call it in danger of failing (laughs) because that was my progress report. Every class, there would be like a, you know, satisfactory, progress, like doing all, there was one column, in danger of failing. And all of my classes except for gym, I was in danger of failing. You had to have something in the back of your head though, you know, seeing seeing your grades and be like, yo, I, I know I'm meant for more than just school. It's kind of how I navigate now. Like when people leave negative comments or push back or disagree, like I'm in my own head. Mm. Like I've been in my own head from the get, it feels like at this point. Yeah, I. it wasn't that I was like so calculated. It wasn't like fuck school. I, like it was just like, yeah. It was just like I knew that nothing that was in front of me actually had any indication to my happiness or success in life. Wow. And and honestly, it's a game of other people's opinions, whether that's the anonymous comment, whether that's your friend who thinks you're selling out after like you popped a little bit, whether that's, I mean, for me, it goes deep. Like I can't hear anybody at this point. And, and I think when people hear that, it can go into a de- audacity and delusion, and I respect that. I think it's a, ve- I think I, f- I walk a very tight rope. And I don't think on every day, I'm always at my best. I'm sure sometimes I'm delusional or audacious, but it sure beats being crippled by everybody's opinions on an hourly basis, which is the fucking masses. Yeah. Like the the sheer unhappiness that I see on a day-to-day basis because somebody else's opinion is dragging you down. And they let people dictate their entire lives. A hundred percent. And then there's the reverse of it, which is, who are all these people that think that they should just cast judgment on everybody's lives? I'm dying to like, like, do you know how unhappy the trolls of the internet really are? Like, do you understand what it looks like if you spend a lot of hours on social media shitting on people? Do you know what's actually in that person's heart and soul? Well, it's like those Yelp reviewers. You know, you go on Yelp, right? When you go check out a new restaurant or like a new place you wanna go, it has a bad review, you click on the reviewer, Guaranteed 10, 10, all their reviews are, are awful. If someone like has the time to write a negative review, you go on their, on their Yelp page, it's all bad. One of the great things that is true to me in life is you find what you're looking for. If you wake up tomorrow morning and you want to find negativity in the world, good news, You'll find there's it. unlimited. If you wake up in the morning and you want to find positivity, good news, it's unlimited. I think that we need to have a much better conversation. You know who really bothers me? People that are cynical and unhappy, but disguise it as keeping it real. Those are my favorite fuckers. I've been really focused on the Joneses lately. I'm now on a new kick. I've decided over Thanksgiving, there's a new person I'm going after, which is this, I'm keeping it real. They're, they're, they're really just pessimistic, cynical, and angry people but they call out shit to keep it real. You don't keep it real, you keep it real negative, dick. (laughs) That's what you're keeping it real, you're keeping it real negative, so fuck you. It's the pretentious criticism, the holier than thou attitudes. It's not even that, it's that it's that you see happiness in someone and you're so desperate to misery loves company. It's the misery loves company, motherfucker. I hate that person. Mm Like if you're fucking miserable, go in a cave and be miserable. Stop dragging people that are aspiring out there. 100%. I mean, look, I feel like one of my problems is sometimes I, I, I try to see the best in things, right? I try to look on the positive side too much. No, no, so- no, no, no. Being optimistic is great. You'll be disappointed. I get disappointed daily. Of course. But it's a lot better than seeing than the world pissed off shit. all the time. Yeah. You know, one thing that I look to you for uh, in, in a big part of my journey in my career, in my life is self-awareness. And, and one thing I wanted to say to you is self-awareness is scary as fuck. Um, if you're good at judging yourself. Mm. I think self-awareness, if you're capable of accepting yourself for who you are, is actually the brightest light of it all. I love being self-aware. I suck at a lot of things. I just don't think about them. Like I can't read for shit. 
I interrupt people when I interview them 24 seven. <laughs> Everybody's super pissed on the internet about that. Not good, because I already know what the person's saying. I can't help it, I'm sorry. There's plenty of things that I'm not good at. I love self-awareness. I like, it's kept me so happy. Like, you know, I'm not upset at myself that I'm selfish in certain areas. That's human. I, I think that we just don't love each other ourselves enough. I, I think we, I don't know who's, perfection I'm trying to live up to. Like if I, like silly things, like people get on me for biting my nails. Gives a fuck. <laughs> like people are just critiquing yeah. themselves all day long. You like reading the comments? Love. You do it on every video, every post? All day. How do you, how do you deal with the negativity? Someone talking about biting your nails. Empathetic. Mm. Empathy. Somebody just watched 49 seconds of me spitting some pontification on Instagram and they've decided to make a judgment on me. And I respect that, I put myself out there. They don't know everything about me. So when they drag me down, be like, this guy's a fucking idiot who's full of shit or what the fuck, or I'm like, that makes sense. They saw me in the Explore feature. They're like, who's this dick face? They watch it, they don't like it. And they decide I'm shit and they're not in a good place so they have to drag down. I deploy empathy first, sucks to be, I would never do that as a happy person to anybody else. So A, I'm already feel bad. Yeah. And B, who the fuck am I? They only got 49 seconds. And in 49 seconds at a time, I could suck shit in perpetuity. <laughs> you know, like at 49 seconds at a time, I could be all time terrible. Especially me that gets hot and competitive and like, you know, like this is how I am when the lights come on. So. I deal with the negativity with empathy to the person that's leaving the comment. A, for the fact that I feel bad because they're in a bad place that they decided to put more hate into the system. And B, like they shouldn't do seven hours of research of my career or who I am as a human being. I would be upset if you thought I was a dick. Mm. Because you've had enough interactions at this point to have a read. Yeah. But like Rick in Arkansas or New York, who saw me in Explore, or who saw, by the way, and I, I have a lot of empathy because I also have fans and followers and people that consume my content that really give me love. And you know the natural reaction when somebody's posting like, this guy's a fucking genius. You know, 30% of the people are like, fuck that guy, before they even watched anything. Yeah, I get that. So, I mean, I hated Tiger Woods and Kobe and Shaq in their prime. They weren't my guy. <laughs> so I, I have empathy. I, I put myself out there, and if you're putting yourself out there, you have to deal with the ramifications of the reality of the system. So I respect the system, I respect the market. If you don't know who I am and you think I'm the biggest piece of shit, I'm great. If you know who I am and you think that, I'm dead. And that's how I live my life. Speaking of empathy, you know, the reason why we started talking last week is you launched Empathy Wines. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, you know, my mom's not going to listen to this podcast, so it's safe to say that I ordered her a bunch of, <laughs> a bunch of wine Thank you. for Christmas. Uh, why, why Empathy Wine? Why now? John Troutman and Nate Schroeder, uh, two guys that have worked for me for a decade, graduated up the wine library and VaynerMedia system, and we're getting to that age where they were like, hey, what's next for me? our capabilities to produce content and marketing to sell a product off the back of the K-Swiss stuff was obvious to me that it was very high. I miss wine. I was gonna say, is this nostalgic? Is it almost like nostalgic for you to, to step back into this? I also knew I could do it. I knew that I could produce the best $40 wine in the world and sell it for 20 bucks. Like people are gonna shit when they taste it. I can't wait to get mine. Like, yeah, literally, like, yeah. Like the amount of, Empathy Rosé that is gonna be on Instagram this summer and spring, like through, I, I can't wait, from from Ghana. Do you know to, you need to get some Rosé too? My friend Shamik Moore, he's the voice of uh, of Miles Martin, the new Spider-Man movie yes. is coming out. Anytime we go to dinner, he, he, like we can go have lunch at 12 we'll or one. Set that up before Rosé, I got done. you, I got so, you. So yeah, there was a lot of factors. I was ready. I'm a timing guy. I was ready to start a project that was direct to consumer on the back of, internet marketing 2019 in a category that I was deeply knowledgeable in, um, timing. And it's a, a subscription service. You can buy three, six or 12 bottles of each of the red, the white and the rosé. Uh, and, it, and it's 
a subscription service, most people don't want to think about wine. People hate going to BevMo and Total Wine and Costco and Wine Library. Like, it, you have to go. Mm -hmm. And so once I convince everybody that I'm producing the best $20 bottle of wine, I think it's going to be a beast. Speaking about your shoes, you brought yes. that up uh, on the back of Empathy. You guys just released a new colorway. Yes, I'm yeah. wearing them. Uh, amazing. How does it feel to have your own shoe? The best. Like, to me... To me, it's so crazy. This is why everybody listening, like life is crazy. Imagine this, I'm 33 years old and I'm working in a liquor store that is my family business in New Jersey and I'm there every day of my life. 10 years later, I'm in a place in culture where a sneaker with my signature on it, not only is produced, but is doing extremely Selling, well. Yeah. So yeah, man, I just want kids to be patient like 23 year olds trying to figure out their life. And I didn't even start the life that everybody knows me for until I was in my mid thirties. How insane. old are you? I'm 29. I like, there was nobody on earth that knew who the fuck I was when I was 29 years old. So much can happen when you're good at your craft or what you do. And so I just, uh, I just wish people were a little more patient. It feels amazing. I'm 43 years old. I grew up in the East Coast in Jersey in the prime of sneaker explosion. I hate Michael Jordan, so I had to skip all that as a Knicks fan. But That's why you started the shoe. That's why you started the shoe, man. <laughs> you, just wanted to, you just wanted to take a shot at, at honestly, MJ. Honestly, what I really wanted to do was it came to me, and when I realized they didn't want me to be an influencer, they wanted to put my signature on the sneaker, I love win-win situations. And the K-Swiss collab was a win-win situation. Either it would be massively successful and I would surprise people, which is basically what's happened, or it would fail miserably and my 10 core friend, friends could make fun of me at my 80-year-old birthday roast. Mm. I like that shit. Remember and when you had those shoes? Remember when you were, you know, because I know I'm going to be macro successful. You know, so to have micro losses is actually a very big part of being an all-time great. Muhammad Ali lost fights, mm -hmm. you know? And so I, I put myself in a position to lose fights. And I think a lot of the people that are not going to win to their capability are scared to go into the ring against a worthy opponent. And they'd rather not try just so they don't fail. Because they worry about other people's opinions. I'm telling you, man, it's crazy to be at this place in my life where I'm like, fuck, this all synthesizes down to people worrying about other people's opinions. And oh shit, that's why I didn't do bad things in high school that my mom asked me not to do because not the prettiest girl in school and not the biggest jock and not the coolest kids, none of their voices penetrated my dome. So if I can get through high school, real life's easy. Are you glad that it happened now rather than when you were 25? Do you feel like it yes has any, no. any does yes it, do you feel like no. it makes any difference? I think, I think if we're talking about like the kind of level of fame and success I have, there are clearly perks of having that happen in your twenties before you're married. <laughs> so there's like, you know, there's some, I'm being serious. I think there's some cool adventures that I missed out on. I'm pumped it happened because it's my process. I needed to go into my family business and put my parents on for everything they did for me. The proudest thing I've done professionally is I've done super right by my parents and my brother, right? I built a business for 14 years for my parents left with nothing. People try to shit on me like daddy put you on. They don't know my story. I put daddy on. Mm -hmm. Started a business with my brother when I had all the leverage, 50-50 from the get. Put my brother on. So I'm proud of how I've navigated my life as a man. Definitely. Definitely. Another thing I wanted to bring up is trash talk. Yes. It's probably one of my favorite. It, it is definitely my favorite new Gary V uh, thing to watch. It's, it's so entertaining. You're literally going to people's garage sales. You're buying things and flipping them on eBay. What, what made you want to start doing this? It's become very obvious to me that excuses are my poison and I want to eliminate them at all costs. I talk a lot about hustle and hard work and people are kind of pushing back on me a little bit right now. And it's been interesting. I'm like, man, I haven't done a good enough job clarifying that when I talk about work ethic, I'm trying to speak to people who are un unhappy or complaining. Not happy with your job? Don't watch Netflix. Work after hours, save money, quit. I'm not trying to get people into depression or burnout. I'm trying to address unhappiness. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things I saw a lot in my comments, cause I read them all yep. was, well, I have no money. I'm like, fuck, I lived my whole life with no money, but I figured it out. I would just buy shit. 
I would buy garage sale shit. And it just got me going, going. I love it. It's like a hobby of mine to go garage sale. I started doing that with clothes. I, did, I used to do that with clothes. Dude, the amount, guys, especially like a stylish kid like you, like if you have flavor, if you're listening right now and you don't have money, but you're cool or fl- you got flavor, you got swag, you got style, if you just spend your life in goodwill and in thrift stores yeah. and buy shit that you think is fresh and then wear it and take a fucking selfie and put it on eBay for three times the price, or like I see every day, the amount of people that buy $3 t-shirts and sell them for 35 bucks on eBay and Etsy and fucking Facebook Marketplace is enormous. There's no excuse in America to say you have no money, even if you're in the deepest, poorest places, because if you can literally get a dollar, you can buy your first t-shirt at Goodwill and get it up for 15 bucks on Facebook. Because you know what's funny? What's funny is everybody's got a smartphone. Like you go into the poorest places yeah. in America yeah. and everybody's got a smartphone, which means you have the internet. I mean, listen, the homeless, you've got people all over on home, homeless smartphones. I get emails every day. I'm homeless, I watch you on YouTube. It, you know, so I don't know, I really, and listen, of course there's 1% that don't. and I. That's what's always fascinating to me. The 1% that populates like, what about my aunt? I'm like, cool, I get it but I'm trying to address 99.9% of people. And the garage sale thing's been huge. By the way, huge. I have tens of thousands of tweets, emails, DMs, messages from people over the last 100 days who are completely inspired by the show and are making significant money. And significant comes in all forms. Do you know what it's like to make an extra 200 bucks a month when you're not doing well financially? Huge. 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 Like it fucking matters. It's also fun for 50% of people. Like that's the- Well, I watch the videos and I'm watching you like go and you're getting, you're, you're picking up these stuffed animals. And you're like, <laughs> Do you know what this is gonna sell for? 40 bucks, 50 bucks. And seven bucks yeah. I get pumped. Like a, <laughs> buying something for a quarter, selling it for 11 on eBay with the fees, with all the bullshit that everybody makes fun of me in the comments for, what about the gas, all that. Like I'm still like, I made six bucks. I bought it for a quarter, I sold it for 11, net six bucks, or I could be jerking off on my couch right now watching fucking yeah. Netflix. Like, if you complain and you're unhappy, I will spend my career suffocating the living shit out of you. <laughs> to prove that is point. basically, and by the way, out of gratitude and guilt, mm. I've come to realize this. I'm so grateful for my DNA, my parenting, my circumstance of growing up with nothing, and I feel a level of guilt. I was so gifted a mother that put me in a position to succeed. I know that everybody has that. So I'm almost trying to play my parents' role for everybody that watches my content. If you don't have that person in your life, let me be that shield. Let me populate you up. You're either a person that goes into comments to drag people down, or you're a person that puts out content to put people up. I'm so proud to be the latter. What do you think is the biggest score that you found at a garage sale? AJ once found, um, with garage selling with me, like $4,000 worth of, Super Nintendo games for 10 bucks. Wow. I actually had a crazy one the other day. I mean, the in episode two of Trash Talk, I buy like 500 Olympic pins for 20 bucks and they've sold now on eBay for like a thousand. Wow. A big one's a coffee cups too. I'm obsessed that's, with mug life. Yeah, mug, is, no, that's what I want. Honestly, to bring up next. honestly, I don't it's have any tattoos, life. but I'm like, fuck it. I might just put a mug life fucking tattoo on my <laughs> fucking stomach, like Tupac. Like I'm, you know why? Mugs are everywhere. See, one of the things they that last keeps, forever too. Forget about that. The key to garage selling is what is actually there. When I started teaching AJ in the '90s, video games everywhere. We cleaned house. Everybody sold their old video games. You didn't want it anymore. You didn't want fucking Nintendo, you had Super Nintendo. You didn't want fucking Super Nintendo games, you had GameCube, like everybody sold. Then everybody figured it out. I haven't seen a fucking good stash of video games at a garage sale in like two years. Mm -hmm. I started seeing like, like it just caught my attention. Like somehow on eBay, I got into some search queries and I was like, why is that coffee mug 20 bucks? Got into it, every garage sale has coffee mugs and they're always a fucking quarter. And the amount of coffee mugs that go for 10 to 30 is all day. Mug life. Mug life. <laughs> mug life. <laughs> how do you, uh, 
how do you balance all of this, man? The shoes, the wine, you know, the, the content constantly. I mean, your podcast, your YouTube channel, your Instagram, all of your socials. Lack of obsession of perfection. I got it. Yeah. I mean, because so many times, you know, I don't post something or I, I, I delete the video or I say, I'll wait till I get the next, the next better photo. Look, I'm going through it right now. It's very clear to me that Instagram's going through its d like decline of organic uh, yeah, reach. Everybody's yeah. feeling it. And like, even I'm like, fuck, but like, like I'm pushing through and like, yeah, lack of perfection. I'm just, I just think doing 97 things at an eight is better than doing one thing at a 10. Mainly because the math works out. One thing out of 10 is 10. 98 at 8 is 800. You know, like, nine, you know? Mm -hmm. How do you decide what to hop on as well? Because I notice you're, you're first on everything, man. I read comments. So then what happens with the app? Uh, you remember that app that came out, I feel like, last year? Uh, not Strava. It was another one. Oh, Vero? Vero. There we go. I feel, you know, I saw everything for, for two weeks and then nothing. That's where I'm really good. I'm really good at being patient. Everybody wants to jump on like, Peach is the next thing, Vero's the next thing. Like everybody's like the next thing, the next thing. I'm not obsessed with the next thing. I'm obsessed with the right thing and doing it the best in the right thing. Yeah, man, I pay attention. Look, I'm a, I'm a creature of the culture, of the attention of everything. I'm watching, I just watch. I'm ve you know, this is the funniest thing about me. I talk so much, I interrupt so much, but I listen, man. How am I fucking first on everything? Because I listen. I listen with my eyes, right? I remember this very clearly. Three years ago, I'm just going through the airports. I'm like, why are young women wearing jeans with tears in them again like they did in the 90s, right? Yeah. I'm watching. I'm watching like, I'm watching. Like, it didn't take me too long to figure out like kids were wearing champion hoodies or feel us back or like, I'm watching. I'm watching. Vander Media just acquired Playbook. This is something exciting because I scoured the internet and I wasn't able to find that much of you talking about this. Mm -hmm. uh, so I thought it'd be, it'd be great to bring it up right now. That's very good work by you. What's going on? What's um, going on? I've got something brewing. When are you airing this? <laughs> uh, we, can, we can hold, I can hold it for another you week if the, you want. A week? Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm, definitely, I'm definitely up to something in the talent space. Mm. I think that I understand the playbook that brought me here. Um, and I think that celebrity and influencers and personalities that the long tail that the 15 minutes of fame is that is converting into everybody's famous to 15 people and i think that i can help a lot of human beings have a much happier and financially successful life and so i'm starting to spend some time figuring out that model mm -hmm. we had a division inside of vayner media called vayner talent where for $30,000 a month, we would give you a team of eight people and we would build you the Gary Vee content machine. It worked extremely well for a lot of people. As you can imagine, if somebody's paying 360,000 a year, they're yeah. either betting the house on themselves or they're in a financial place where they can afford it. For a lot of people who wanna have speaking careers, be on TV or make money as an influencer, it just worked for the majority of people. And so there's a 3.0 version of that in my head and we'll be coming out with some more executions in that space. What does Gary Vaynerchuk look, you know, when you're looking for talent? What draws you in? People that are obsessed with the process, not the shit that the fucking game buys you. Not the cars, not the shoes, but the actual process. Because then you're finished, right? Like if you actually want the, if you want from the off-whites to the fucking mansion, to the private planes, to the spa treatments, to the girls, to the, to the, red carpet to the dresses and gowns, the jewelry, then you don't have a long career. But if you can't breathe, like that's why entrepreneurship is so weird to me. I so couldn't breathe that I wasn't even capable of getting C's in high school because I would suffocate giving school even another second of not me being in my own head of how to sell wine or baseball cards. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for people who can't breathe if they're not singing who can't breathe if they're not designing, who can't breathe if they're not building a business or playing on the field. Like, do you know how many athletes hate their sport? A lot. It's a brain fuck, because as a kid, you'd never believe it, but like, the, especially if you think about it, if you're born gifted mm -hmm. and you're 6'8 and can run like a gazelle 
and that's your ticket out. Or even if it's not a ticket out, even if you're in a middle class family, it's like that's how you can make seven million a year. You're going. Yep. But it's been interesting as I've met a lot of these athletes who don't love their sport. They're well, not. Well, that's happy. when it becomes a job. They're just not happy. And um, I'm looking for people who are happy. Like I'm obsessed with my process. You know, somebody very big time. I don't want to put him on blast, but like an all 70 year old dude, big time dude, said, You're so unusual because he knows a little bit more of my story. He's like, You're an entrepreneur that's really not driven by the economics. And I was proud when he said it. And he said it 50 50, like kind, but like, Hey, be careful. Like, it's important you don't feel regret that you left that much money on the table. And I do think about that. He came from a smart place, but the answer is people who can't breathe if they're not doing their art. And for me, business is my art. And for other people, it's art. Other people, it's designing. Other people, it's performing on stage. I need somebody who's obsessed with their craft and would be doing it for free, quote unquote. No matter what. No matter what. And I think right now, entrepreneurship is littered, littered with club promoters because it got cool. And yeah, I mean, they watch they watch Gary Vee videos, and they're like, "I want to do this." I get it, but 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 it wasn't my videos. Like it prepared. Like it, I was making the videos. Nobody thought it was cool. It got cool <laughs> because Facebook made a billion dollars, and everyone's like, "Fuck that nerd, twenty four years old, making a billion. I want a billion, right?" Mm-hmm. And here's the other thing. You know why entrepreneurship is sneaky? If you're a rapper or an athlete, and that's cool, and you can get the girl if you do that, you got to prove it. Like nobody roll, like if somebody rolls up and is like, yo, I'm a rapper, you kind of want to know if they have a song that's it's popular. It's like, well, well, do you have a song that I've heard? Are you on the radio? If somebody's like, yo, I'm a basketball player, you're like, are you in the league yeah, or do you like play at the YMCA? But anybody can say they're an entrepreneur and it was like, oh, dope. And I'm curious, are you a successful entrepreneur? Or And that's why entrepreneurship, people don't get it. Entrepreneurship is set for people that suck. Because mm. you put it nicely in your Instagram profile and you're in the game. <laughs> it's the perfect cover. It's the perfect cover. You can't say you're a rapper or an athlete and get away with it. You get laughed at because you haven't done anything. But entrepreneurship right now is very nice and safe. So you're cool. You get to go to the club and be like, entrepreneur, startup founder. <laughs> I got a clothing <laughs> brand. Yeah, but there's a big difference between you and your buddies printing 30 t-shirts yeah. and being fucking supreme. Yeah. It's that moment right now. And that's gonna, and that's why it's gonna be a huge and painful bubble burst when shit hits the fan. Because a lot of people are gonna have to go and get jobs. When Instagram goes down or when it's when, when it's, economy yeah. goes, man. Listen, Instagram doesn't have to go down for when the economy goes down, when all those companies don't have money for you to take that cute picture on your Instagram profile and you're not getting paid anymore. Like, what do you think happens? And this is why I try to like tell I'm not saying this to be negative, I'm saying be smart. If you're lucky enough now to be a travel vlogger personality, like the Bali resort is not gonna pay you. 5,000 bucks to come and take a picture on their beach when they're not selling mm-hmm. packages. And so, yeah, I'm just, I want to make sure people are thoughtful because right now it's a little too frothy. Well, it sounds like you're talking about going all in on yourself. Uh, practicality. Mm. Practicality needs to become sexy. How much is too much? And, you know, especially going into the holidays now, how do you navigate that? Because I know like around this time, you know, I want to send emails. I want, I want to do shit. I want to do shit. And everyone's, I, you know, you get the out of office replies. How do you, how do you navigate the holidays? I, I navigate, I'll be honest with you. I love the holidays. My favorite thing in the world is when everybody else is shut down because then I can shut down too. Right. And I know a lot of people, when I set up that sentence might think I was about to say, I'm going to fucking You're going to tear it. No, yeah. I, I'm pumped. I'll be very honest with you. I want to spend as much time with my family and rest as much as possible. I love this time of year, Thanksgiving, whole week, ghost. These two weeks during Christmas, ghost. Like, give me more time like that. I wish there was some weird holiday in America, first week of May, nobody worked. Like, I loved that 4th of July fell on a Wednesday this year. I know that off the top of my head. because yeah, That's fu- crazy. And I know it because everybody fucking shut down because it was two days each way. I took advantage of that. Like, I'm big on squeezing as hard as you can when you're on the field. I love sports. I think a lot about it. I'd be such a son of a bitch on the field, but as soon as psh, game over, I'd be like, yo, give daps. And like, but like when I'm on the field, I'm hard. And so like, 
I want people to sleep. Sleep eight hours a day. Talk to me about the 16 hours you're awake. People are like, yo, I don't sleep. I'm like, no, that's not cool. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying when you're awake for 17 hours, like if you sleep four hours a day, but you watch three hours a day of fucking YouTube, you're a fucking idiot. Mm -hmm. Like sleep seven hours and make your fucking (laughs) work. Like it's about, it's quality and quantity, but it it all comes down to, to answer your question directly, it comes down to who you are. At 24 years old, who I was and what made me happy was worked every day. I loved the holidays because I was in retail and that's when I worked the hardest, right? So like I didn't have Saturdays off like everybody else. I didn't have holidays off like anybody else. So I didn't grow up in a culture where I even understood what the weekend and holidays were because that's when I was the busiest. I'm a boy of retail. So, you know, like the answer to your question, whatever the fucking makes you happy at that point. And if you're at 26 right now and you need to prove to the world and most importantly yourself that you're gonna fucking do it, like fucking work every minute of the holidays. If you're 31 and you worked seven years of your life to get to a place and you just had your first child, go fucking spend three weeks and see every relative so they can rub little Johnny's head. Like, I don't give a fuck. I don't have a point of view. My point of view is know yourself, figure yourself out and don't do it for anybody else. Mm. I love that. It's real. Yeah. It's very, who are you trying to, I hate when people are like, yo, Gary V, been on a bender nine days in a row, haven't fucking slept. I reply all the time, like, don't do it for me and definitely fucking sleep. <laughs> like, you know, I just, for me, the thing that's going to allow me to win the next half century and this is just the beginning and I will not burn out like people are waiting for me to do is I'm happy. People are confused. I hate that people are pushing too hard against hard work right now. It's ideological. Hard work is part of the equation. I hate when people work hard for 10, 15 years, make a lot of money and then start telling everybody else to just sleep and meditate. Yeah, get out, yeah. I'm like, cool, but don't be fucking ideological. Like tell your truth. Like you worked, I was there, I watched you. (laughs) So like now you made it and you're a big shot, like be careful, like don't be a hypocrite. Do you feel like each one of your successes almost fuels that ethic to keep going? No. No? Because the success is the game itself. Back to the process. You know, like I don't need the W's. I like the L's, I like the W's. I just, I think of it, you know what's weird? I don't know why this is the analogy. I think of it like pickup basketball. Like in college, I loved pickup basketball so much. I was in a hoodie college, so all these kids were 10 times better than me, so my game got much better, and it was real fucking trash talk, which I love. Um, I just loved it. Like going out and getting beat 11 nothing was amazing because I was so pissed and wanted that to win bitter, the next Yeah, game. that taste. And winning 11 nothing was the best, because you like, and that is kind of how I think about what I do. K-Swiss, the wine thing, VaynerMedia, this talent thing you're bringing up. I've got all sorts of things coming up and there's gonna be wins and losses. There's just gonna be wins and losses. I mean, I've got a little one. Like I remember there was a sampling division that we had at Vayner Sampling. It was supposed to be the biggest thing ever. Failed quick, two minutes in. Music sampling? No, product sampling. Okay. Like a new Twix flavor comes out, get 50,000 people to try it. Just didn't work. I love that. I'm glad I took that L. And I just, I wish people loved their game, their process. And I think people, the reason I like the pickup basketball one, whether it's running, a lot of people like to run. I hate to run, but like D-Rock just ran a marathon. I love big shout out. Like, oh yeah? You know, yeah. So like, so like, if I could get people to think about their careers, the way they feel about waking up in the morning and running for that hour, where they clear their stress, they love it. I hate running. So that doesn't work for me. But like, for me, working is the happy place. And I want that for everybody because the big thing is I don't think people have really quantified how many hours of their adult life is actually working. Mm. Like, think about how much work takes up the time that you're awake. So a lot of people are like, oh, I worked nine hours a day. I'm like, yeah, but you also sleep nine hours a day. So that means you work nine hours a day and then everything else you do while you're awake is only six hours, travel, shower, like work is a lot of your life. Fuck man, do I want you to want to like it and live it and like enjoy it. It's a lot, dude. Yeah. Like even if you work nine to five, if you work eight hours a day and you sleep eight hours a day, 
That means work is 50% of every hour of your whole day for 40 years of your life. Like, why the fuck are you doing something you hate? Make less money, buy less fancy shit, and be happy. Like, literally people are miserable because of an extra room in their I house. I think it's the comfort, though. People are comfortable. They don't want to change it up. Yeah, but you know what? I, you know, I think it's that people buy shit they don't need and then have to work a job they hate to pay for the shit they to don't need. To impress people they don't like. I hate that shit. It fucks me heavy, which is how I got to the Joneses, which is how I got to don't worry about other people's judgment. You know, now, especially because of Instagram, back to your point, like what happened for me, the other thing is if you're 22, 18, 25, 30, and you think you should have your whole life figured out, that's ludicrous. But that's what every single 30. I feel it too. I of feel course, it too. Especially because 30's coming. Yeah. And 30's a motherfucker. Any advice? Fuck 30. <laughs> like, like, yes, there's a lot of advice. I would fucking rip both my legs off to be 30. That's how young 30 is. Yeah. If you can give me 13 years back right now, man, I would fucking give it all up. <laughs> you don't need to, I can have zero followers on every platform. Let me just start. Like, what I would say is this. You'll never believe what 43 feels like. It feels like 29. I actually think I have more energy and happiness and, and youth at 43 than I did at 29. Well, it's crazy because I feel like I've done more this year being 29 than I've done from 20 to 25. That's great. You know, like, no, well, that I, makes I, sense. I feel it. Like, I, you know, well, I from really 20 do. to like 18 to 20, like people don't do that much shit. <laughs> like most people don't, right? Like, yeah, that makes sense. That makes me happy, dude. That means that you're going down a smart path. I, I just wish people realized how young they were, including 57. Like, it's just young. Like, you're probably gonna have 20 years of productive life. People are just like, don't know how to put time in perspective. They're, they're, they're super like passive day to day, but they're antsy year to year. It, it just makes no pro- Did you always have this perspective? I think so. And I do believe a little bit in the old soul kind of shit. Like, because one thing fucks with me. I don't understand why I did this, but this is real. I would hang out with grandparents like you would not believe. Like back in the 80s in like Jersey, work playing outside, grandparents would f- travel up from Florida and visit or some shit. And for no reason, we're like playing wiffle ball or basketball. I would just stop and go sit down with like a friend's grandpa and be like, tell me what it was like when the man landed on the moon. I liked history and I liked context. Like, how'd you, where were you when JFK, I, used to, I was obsessed with the JFK assassination from like first to ninth grade. I was like, where were you when JFK got assassinated? Like, tell me about Vietnam. And like, did you like Reagan? Like I would, was really fascinated. I just always gravitated towards very old people. And um, yeah, I'm an old soul for sure in a very high energy body, right? I'm a really interesting contradiction. I'm so patient. I'm such a marathon runner, but nobody who's been listening to this, who's discovering me the first time through your world would ever think that because the energy of my communication feels, you know, Half the people think I'm on coke. Well, that's why I, like, I, I mean, that's like, why I was so drawn to you, you know, because my, like I said, you know, my, I, I'm like this. So to be able to, to, to be digesting something and be thoroughly entertained and not only, but to actually, you know, walk away with, with knowledge, with, with, with a gem, that's important. I feel like you don't come across that every day. No. And I mean, I think that's why I am who I am. Like yeah. people are like, yo, I want to be like you. I'm like, cool. Like first get lucky as fuck on like DNA Second, have a 20 year career of doing shit without saying a word. So you actually have skills and perspective and wisdom. Third, be disproportionately empathetic to your audience and want them to get off, not what are you gonna get out of them, which is 99% of people's. Everyone's like, give me likes. I'm like, why don't you put out some content that gives you likes? <laughs> like people are like, Gary Vee, I want more followers. I'm like, earn them. Like the, the entitlement, like, yo, I took a cool picture on a sunset. So did 9 million people in the last hour. Even being hot doesn't count anymore because between filters and angles, everyone's fucking attractive everyone's on Instagram. Everyone's hot. Everyone's hot. That's fucked up everything. Yeah, you used to be able to rely on that shit, right? Yeah. It out as long as you yeah. took 50. Yeah, if you, were, <laughs> if you were really good looking in the 90s and 2000, early 2000s, you were set. Instagram fucked it up. Everyone's attractive. Oh, man. 
Uh, Gary. Yes. I want to say thank you so much, man. Thank you, brother. Um, you know, you constantly inspire me. You're, you know, genuine. You're so what's kid. this podcast going to be about? It's about anything and literally everything. You know, it's yeah. me going through my phone book. It's me going through my Instagram DMs uh, and me having all my friends and, and cool people in the world on to, to chat about literally anything and everything. I love that. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to drop one little thing that I've been thinking a lot about over Thanksgiving. It was, And we talked about it just now. This is a game of selfish versus selfless. Mm. If you asked me why so much good is happening for me is I get high on giving to others. It's like this perpetual machine. I love admiration. Admiration is only earned. Nobody sees you the first time and admires you. And so there's so many people that are trying to build personal brands, trying to like get on. You have to be obsessed with every time you post, are you bringing value to everybody or are you trying to get something from them? You're giving or taking. Are you giving or taking? And everyone's taking. It's about how many likes and followers you get that is disproportionately a take game. That's it. That's why so many of you are struggling to pop. Every post is, will this get me? Do you know how many attractive women get frustrated after three posts and then decide to show flesh again because the only KPI is likes? And will say to my face, like, I wanna build a fashion brand for women. And so I'm like, take half the likes and make content for women, not for pervy dudes. And they struggle with that. And, I, and that's why I wanna talk about this for the last sentence, which is like, are you happy about your 40,000 likes that mean nothing? Or do you want the 13,000 likes that are actually predicated on your ambition? Oh wait, you want 40,000 likes because you care about what other people think when they see how many likes you got. Like we are getting, we are so deep into a math game. Do you know how many people would shit their pants if tomorrow Instagram decided to stop showing likes and follows? Oh. <laughs> it would be the best. It would be over. It would be the best thing for the humans. Yeah, well, I mean, Kanye, a bunch of people went on, uh, they went online telling, uh, for Twitter, they, Kanye was like, remove the like and the retweet, uh, you know, the the numbers. Yeah. I just, I, I think if, I think there should be like, it'd be really cool if people could live one month without seeing the metrics, they'd be stunned by how much that would impact what they put out. And that's what's worked for me. Like, I want, I'm interested in your admiration. What I love about when I sign sneakers or when I'm in the airport is p the amount of people in the last six months that say to me, I never fan out about anybody, but I needed to come and take a selfie. I brought your book when we first met uh, on my beach show. <laughs> I was too nervous to have you sign it. I was like, I, I never do this. And I'll tell you why. It's so much more fun to be followed because someone admires that you brought them value than the fact that you can drop 55 in a basketball game or the fact that you're a size zero with a pretty face. That's just the truth. I, I was wondering why it was happening. It was happening a lot. Like really famous people are like freaking out or like you could just tell when like somebody was in the scene all the time. It was just like, it was happening, right? And I was like, right. Because I'm getting admiration. And that is something everyone should try to tr do. And I think the reason is, if you make admiration the North Star, you will produce dramatically better content. Mm. You're not gonna try for a hack. The reason I was never in an engagement group is I don't need the bullshit metrics. I need admiration. That doesn't come with fake fucking followers. Yeah. Fake followers can't stop you in the fucking hallway to say that you changed their life. Fake followers aren't going to ask you for a picture. They're just not going to say that you changed their life. The reason I do garage sale videos is because people will stop me at the airport and say that 900 bucks they made during this holiday season that allowed them to buy a gift for their daughter because they fucking sold shit that was in their closet mattered to their lives. Not because I wore a cutoff t-shirt in a very attractive way. <laughs> Seriously, why do you think celebrities are losing? What value are they bringing? You can't be an A-list Hollywood celebrity anymore and be cool. Like, Angelo Jolie is not fucking winning. Brad Pitt's era is over.
because they bring nothing to the table. At least an A-list Instagram celebrity once in a blue moon may like your comment. There's at least a prayer of an engagement. Those fuckers need to learn too. By the way, quickest hack, I'm gonna leave you with this. If you're fucking trying to build a big audience and you are not replying to the couple of people that give a fuck about you right now, you're a fucking idiot. That's how I built myself. Twitter, 2007 to 11, I replied to everybody. You're telling me you want a million people to fuck with you, but you don't have the seven minutes to say thank you to the 13 comments you got? You're fucking selfish, dick. It's a selfless versus selfish game. 99% of people are selfish, which is why 99% of people will never build an audience. Simple. We're gonna end it right there. Gary Vanderchuck. Thank you, brother. I love you, buddy. Thank you so much. Thank you.